This tutorial series will cover ways to use textures and UV coordinates in Ray VK scenes. In part one, we'll be discussing using built-in UV support with textures in materials. We'll be covering a few other approaches in follow-up videos. We'll be using version 0.23, so make sure you're using at least that version. There's a download link in the description. Start by dropping the toolkit talks into your project. Open the palette using the Alt-R shortcut. Create a Raymarch Render 3D. Add a null top to the end to see the output. For preview purposes, I'm going to be setting the resolution to 1800 by 1400, but feel free to use whatever resolution you want. Create a Taurus SDF. and connect it to the first input on the renderer. Select the renderer and make sure nothing else is selected. And then use the Alt-Shift-R shortcut to open the editor tool menu. Choose Add Look at Camera, which will create a look at camera and connect it to the renderer. On the camera, set the FOV angle to 55 and the position to 0, 5, and 9. Select the renderer again, and open the Tools menu again, and choose Add Point Light, which will create a point light operator and connect it to the renderer. On the light, uh, set the position to 2, 5, 5. We're now going to work on the first approach using the torus that we already created. On the torus, set the radius to 1.5 and the thickness to 0.5. Create a modular map and insert it between the torus and the renderer. With the modular mat selected and nothing else selected, open the Tools menu again and choose Add Diffuse, which will add a diffuse shading contribution element and connect it to the material. In order to be able to use UV coordinates in the material, we need the SDF surface to have the UV attribute, similar to when you're working with SOPs. Some SDF operators, including Taurus, have the ability to add shape-specific UV attributes. But many do not, um, so there's a different approach that we'll be covering later for those cases. If you find an example of a ray marching shader that uses textures on Shader Toy or somewhere else for some type of SDF that doesn't support them in Ray TK, uh, please reach out and let me know, and I'll see if I can add that to the toolkit. On the Taurus SDF, change the UV mode to Taurus. Some other types of operators will have several different options here, but for Taurus, there's only one. Next, we're going to import a top image source into the scene. Create a texture field. And note that we're using texture field and not texture 3D field. Even though we're dealing with a three-dimensional SDF, we still want a regular texture field because the texture that we're going to be using is two-dimensional. Create a movie file in top and select an image or video file. I'm going to use the count uh, movie that comes with such designer. I'm going to add a null top to the end and then drag that uh, null top onto the texture parameter of the texture field here. Next, we're going to connect the output of the texture field to the third input on the modular material here. So this will add the color from the texture image here to the color that's coming from the diffuse shading element.
So note how this is only showing a small portion of the image. Uh, and if you try adjusting the translate parameter here, you'll see how it's just using the, the XY plane. It's not really paying attention to the shape that it's being used on. Now to use a different type of coordinates with the texture, we're going to need to connect something to the texture field's UV map input. So select the modular material, make sure nothing else is selected, and open the editor tools again. Under the reference variable menu, we're going to choose surface UV which will create a variable reference operator connected to that surface UV attribute. We're going to connect that to the input on the texture field, the UV map input. And you can now see that it is somewhat following the shape there, but it's not covering the full area. And that's because the coordinate range that it's using is off. So this will hopefully be fixed in future versions, but for now we can correct it with scaling and offset. Um, if you aren't seeing this issue, issue, just skip this next step. So on the texture field, we're going to increase the scale to two and two. So you can now see that it is covering the full shape there. And if you use the translate here, you can see that the, the X translate is kind of moving it um, around the ring as a whole. And then the Y is going kind of uh, around the, the outer part of the ring. So currently it's adding the color from the texture to the color from the diffuse shading element. But what we want is to have the texture multiplied with the diffuse color. Future versions of the toolkit will have a color input on the diffuse shading contrib, in which case you can just, you would just be able to connect that directly there. Uh, at least in version 23, um, the diffuse shading contribution element doesn't have that. So it has a roughness input and an albedo input, which are covering different properties of the shading and not the color. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to select both of these fields. We're going to open the editor tools again, and then under combine fields, we're going to choose multiply which will create a combined fields operator with the operation set to multiply. Then we're going to disconnect this texture field here and then connect this combined fields in place of the diffuse shading element to the second input on the modular material. So you can now see that it is using the color from this texture with the uh, with the diffuse shading element. So if you adjust the color here, uh, you can see that it's kind of combining those two like that. Next, we're going to add a rotate operator to the end here. Insert it between the material and the renderer. And if you rotate that, note how the texture is moving uh, kind of with the shape as it's being rotated. Now you can also, if you, disc if you connect the rotate in front of the material, um, it's going to have the same behavior. And that's because the UV attribute isn't impacted by this rotation here. The rotation is just affecting the coordinates for the shape as a whole, and the UV kind of moves with that. Now, there are some other operators that you can use to kind of transform the UV without moving the shape itself, which we'll be covering in later sections. And that's it for the first part of this series. So to recap, we've got a Taurus SDF, 
with the UV mode set to torus. And that's going into a modular material, which is using a diffuse shading element and a texture field. And the texture field is using this surface UV property referenced from the modular material created using the reference variable menu in the editor tools. So it's using that as the coordinates for the texture field, and then we are multiplying those two together and feeding that into the material to produce the color. In upcoming videos, we'll go through some other approaches, including working with SDFs that don't have their own built-in UV support. Check out my Patreon for more subscriber-only content like scene files, tutorials, and early access to features. As always, feel free to reach out on the Touch Designer Discord or on Instagram if you have questions. There are links to all that in the video description. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the rest of the series.